My name is Daniel Chitos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hey, everyone. Thank you for having me, first of all. Um, I'm coming from, I'm tuning in from New York. I uh, was born and raised here, so I'm on Eastern time, as always. Uh, and yeah, I'm really excited to be here and talk to you guys. Awesome. So let's dive into it. Entrepreneurship. And, and I mean, it's a big topic. But what I want to talk about is how do individuals succumb to the temporary defeat? Because everybody's journey is unique. Everybody's got to go through it. But I feel like sometimes we go through a lot of crap in our lives or business journey that we think, oh, we're the only ones that are going through this and nobody else has experienced anything like this. So what can you tell us about that? Well, that's funny because I actually have went through that myself. I guess when I was younger, um, I was a complainer and I didn't realize it until I became an entrepreneur and started studying entrepreneurship and mindset development. And I was like, I would start thinking to myself, you know, as I started working in my own business and, and developing myself that what, what was the point of me complaining? Because there's people that are going through worse things than I am, number one. And number two, um, we all go through problems. So the same problem I'm having at this exact moment, there's like a million plus people having the same problem at the same exact moment. Um, and I think when you think that way, and you start like embedding that in your head that my problem is, is their problem. It's like, it's so much easier and you learn not to stress anymore. And that was a big thing for me. Stress was huge. Like since I was younger, since I was a teenager, uh, I'm 26 now, but I used to just like put things on top of myself in a way that was making things worse for myself. And when I started to let go, I started to understand that it's just like, you can't take life seriously, number one. And number two, you have to go through problems to get anywhere. That really like changed my life. And I'm not joking. I, I tell this to everybody all the time. Um, normally I would stress over just the smallest things. And now that I'm like, this is something minor compared to something that could be worse. And number two, there's a million people going through it. So I kind of laugh through it, to be honest. I laugh through all of those problems and struggles and that helps me. How did you, how did you come up with that idea? How did you get to that realization that, I mean, I take life very seriously. I think it is serious. It's my life. But I understand what you're saying that, you know, it's one of those. I cope with stress differently. When I get to a stress, I, I, I want to go back and realize what caused that. So if I'm going to go through it, I'm okay with going through it once. But what can I improve or implement not to go through this process again? and be stressed. And sometimes it takes 5, 10, 15 different implementations where I get rid of that one stress that, yep. that caused the stress to begin with, right? So how did you realize it? What did you do? Um, I first started to realize what was that one thing or two things that I was constantly making such a big deal out of that was so unnecessary. And you would think like, okay, bills bills are like a huge thing that stresses everybody out right and that was a huge thing that used to stress me out uh especially starting entrepreneurship when you're pretty much using your own money to build a business so i used to think what do i stress out all the time and it wasn't it wasn't just me it was me and my family so we would stress as it stress it out together and i'm like okay what's the one thing that we're always stressing out and it would be like my car my car always had issues so i took that one idea and i was like why do i get so I act like the world is over when something's wrong with my car. And it's a big deal because, yeah, you need to drive it everywhere. And I, I used to work and I had to need my car every day. But I literally took it to another level where I feel like because I was stressing it out so much, I kept having car problems. So I had to, I had to analyze that on my own after hearing more personal development from, like, experienced entrepreneurs, experienced spiritual developers. And I had to think about it. And I'm like, wait a second. You think I'm having this issue over and over because I keep thinking about it and I, I act like it's the end of the world. And the minute that I stopped acting that way, I had little to no car problems. Or when I did, it was something minor and I was able to fix it because everything else was flourishing in my life. So I think people need Sabrina, to- Sabrina, a nice dealership in New York, new car, and you don't put up with that shit anymore. But, yeah. but okay, so let me get to that point. He, he, here you brought up a good point. And the reason why I said this is because I used to own an auto repair shop, right? Oh, wow. And 
sometimes, and I and I did that when I was in twenties, and I had it for nine years, and I was making millions of dollars in my place where typically you don't see mechanics making millions of dollars. But I was yeah. producing that a lot because I was giving good service. And, but that's a whole different story. But here is the key element. If you think about it, leasing a brand new car might cost, not today, today is much cheaper. Back then, it would be between three to 400 bucks for a decent car, or maybe like 250 to 300 bucks. You could have got a nice, it wouldn't mean a Lexus, it wouldn't have been a BMW, it would have been a Chevy, Kia, Hyundai, or something else like that, right? I literally was in shock for many, many years that why people come to me, spend money, fix the car, where if they took that same amount of money and you divide it out throughout the whole year, it would have been cheaper if they would have bought a brand new car and would have paid the lease for three or four years, they wouldn't have had any problem. It would have been cheaper for them in totality. It would have been cheaper. Yeah, a couple of months, maybe there was no problem with their cars and they didn't have to pay anything. But then to me, it was like, why are they not doing that? Like, that's so simple. You don't have to, I mean, I wasn't going to tell them that because then I would have lost clients. But, you know, in my mind, I was like, why are you, why are you having these difficulty with the car? You got to get rid of it, you know, and get a new, I don't know. So yeah. if you need a dealership to send, I, I can, I can probably, I can Google a nice dealership for you and get that car. But I know you got a way better car now. Yeah, no, yeah, and this was the same car. I mean, I, I changed cars often, but I've always had a BMW, and BMWs come with problems. Like, we know that, but I feel like um, that's one thing that I also started to do was, like, not blame other people or other circumstances or even objects on what's going on. And I started to look at myself and say, this is happening because of me. Like, when you take responsibility for everything, um, it, it for some reason, for me, and I think a lot of people that start to do that, it stresses you out less. Um, and you start to understand that, like, you're in control of everything. Once you know that you're in control of your life, like, that's when everything changes for you. But, uh, yeah, that, that made a big difference for me, for sure. So talk about self-development. Where do you get your self-development and what do you do? So um, my first venture in entrepreneurship was network marketing. Uh, I studied real estate, but I, I got into it somewhat, just not fully. So network marketing has been, like, my full-time thing for the past two years. Um, and I, I learned a lot from my mentors, you know, people who were very successful in the industry. And then also just from people who were successful in entrepreneurship in general. I literally went on YouTube. I studied Les Brown, Jim Rohn, um, Bob Proctor, and people like this. And, and I just, I mostly, I think I studied their techniques of how to control your mind, how to control circumstances, how to get what you want, how to manifest. Uh, and that's where I think that's where everything changed for me. Uh, when, when I learned about manifestation and how it works and then when it worked. Uh, so it's not something that happened really fast. I had to keep doing it. And it was kind of stressful for the first like year and a half that I was like, you know, what's going on. And then after that first year and a half of co consistently personally developing, things started to just happen one after the other, like as I pictured it and as I said it. So um, after you do that, you can't stop personal development. You just keep going from there. I agree with that 100%. So here's my question. If somebody wants to get involved in entrepreneurship and they want to leave their nine to five career or they just don't have the experience in business and they just want to get experience, doesn't matter if they're going to make money off of it or not, where do you think they should start? Should they just go on YouTube and Google things? What should they do? It's funny because you can just do that now. Like all you have to do is go on Google or YouTube and, and search things. So... I think what I would say is a little bit different from, I think this, this is such a thing that goes back and forth with successful pe people in the business. So most people would say, what do you like to do? What's your passion? Start there, right? And then other people would say, forget about the passion for right now. What's going to make you money? So for someone who wants to succeed or wants to just start an entrepreneurship, I think the first thing would be to do the smart thing is analyze your skills. So what do you even know how to do? What have you been doing the past couple of years? Uh, do you like what you're doing? So I think it's more of a breaking down, you know, what I like, what I know, what I have experienced in how many years, and then going from there. And I feel like, to be honest, if you start out with what you're passionate about, that might steer you in, you know, a direction of like more stress and more, you know, fear and more, just because 
we know that your passion can, of course, set you financially free in the long run. But nowadays, it makes sense to know what pays so that you can work, you know, what you're, uh, what you're passionate about stress-free. So I would say start by analyzing what you know, because then you can immediately use those skills to make money and then, anal- like, put out a plan. What, how can I make this money online? How can people pay me for what I know? How can someone pay me at home and I don't have to do anything for what I know? Whatever the case is, you want to learn to keep doing that and then replace what your income is at your job right now. That's when you can quit your job and then you can do whatever you want at that point. Um, so yeah, I think that's where people should start. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I mean, financial stress is probably the worst type of stress, uh, yes. obviously for many, many, many people. But uh, I feel like a lot of people want to get the, well, let's say there's a female entrepreneur. They look at you and you look like, what, 21, 22 years old. And then they look at it like, oh, Sabrina's got this experience. She's got the money. She's got the car, the house. They look up to you, right? But the key element for people is to see that Sabrina is on the 20th step. I'm on the second step. So this takes time. I feel like a lot of people want to do shortcuts and jumps because maybe as an entrepreneur, sometimes we make the mistake and we don't share our struggles, our challenges, turbulences, and the valleys of the life that we have gone through. That's why they only see the, they only see the blink blink. They don't see all the hard work that you have to go through it and learn and go through that. So that to me is like giving yourself enough time that doesn't mean go lazy or, you know, take the next 10 years. No, but I feel like, you know, I was talking to one of my buddies and some of my competitors, what they've done in 10 years, I've done in two years. Mm-hmm. But I told them, I said, that's because I wanted to do it faster. That doesn't mm-hmm. mean I don't respect what they've done in 10 years. They put in 10 years. I am grateful for the, what they have done because they are my competition. Right. But here's the key element. I'm not stupid in what they have done and what how they got there. I know it takes a lot of hard work. So I want to do it faster, but I'm not going to say, oh, why I'm not there after a month. That would be very stupid. Yep. Very true. And that's funny because that was the main problem I dealt with, I guess, um, getting clients and working with new business partners was that most people in my industry at that moment were not showing the struggle ever. Um, they were showing the fancy cars and the houses and you know, retiring their parents, which is amazing, but they never showed how they struggled. So I knew that I had to do that from the beginning. And I, and it's funny because, you know, people just assume things like you said. So people will come on and say like, come on my Instagram and be like, oh, you, you're rich. And I, I was like, wait a second. I never once ever came on Instagram saying I had money. That was the thing. I never said I had money. I was showing my process and what I was doing and how I was traveling. And I would tell them I'm able to do this because of this. And you have to do this by doing this. And I would, and I, I made that my business at that point, like over a year ago, I think it was like a year and a half. I was like, okay, I'm going to come on here and share every struggle and every thing that I go through because I don't want people to, you know, get misled. And that's why a lot of people. Sabrina, I checked out your IG. It doesn't look like you're struggling. <laughs> no, I'm not. Not anymore. I'm definitely not now. I was for a long, long time. I was for. I need to for, see I, those posts because I missed all of those posts. How yeah, they're they're, they're far back. Go go down, go down. You'll read the long captions, and it's all in there. Um, but no, okay, now cool. I'm not. Now I'm not for sure. Um, but but I do like to talk about how I got here and how you know I was struggling because it was not easy in any way, shape, or form. Um, and you know I'm still I'm still trying to reach for higher goals, so you know it's a constant thing. Yeah, it, it was one of those things. And, and, and I agree with you. More people need to see their... The problem is that people think that it was easy to get there. If it was yeah. easy, everybody else would be doing it. So yeah. that by itself is a challenge that they need to be... The, the mindset needs to be shifted. Anything that's worth having comes through struggle, turbulences, hard work, effort, IQ, yeah. resilience, persistence, auto-suggestion, mm-hmm. writing down goals... All of these different elements come in place. Um, yep. So tell me this. What's your favorite book? Self, give me your top self-help book, favorite books. Self, well, I like Think and Grow Rich a lot. Um, and I also like this book that I read called GoPro. It's not necessarily self-help, but it's, it's very 
key to what I'm doing, and it does talk about personal development. Um, but I like you just go for a no all the time. As long as you go for a no, you get there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, If but, more people would understood that. No, I that yeah, exactly, and that's true. And I feel like that's the main thing that you're taught when it comes to entrepreneurship in general, because it is sales, and you know, go for no, no means yes. Like no is the best thing you're ever gonna hear, and you have to really get that. Listen, into your if head. you didn't go for no, I wouldn't think that we would have the human race. What if the yeah. first ten people went and asked, you know, somebody in their little tribe to marry them, whether it was by choice or force, doesn't matter. But what if they said no, and you took that as an answer? You know, the, the human race wouldn't be here because we wouldn't be reproducing. Like to me, it's yeah. like we did that as cavemen already. So why are we trying to? I mean, it's just so natural to me. It just, yep. I mean, as a female, you go to the mall and you go window shopping all the time. You say no to a lot of stores. You don't yeah. see them going back in the back of their rooms and cry because Sabrina said no to their display. I don't right. think Chanel would take it personally if you said no to them once in a while. You know. Right. So to me, it's like, why is that not a, a standard procedure? Why is that? I mean. Students get no's constantly when they apply for college. Not every university that I applied for, I got into. Yeah. Now I kind of lied to my wife. I said well, I got into my top three choices, but that wasn't true. You know, I got a bunch of no's. I just ignored the no's and I just said, "Yeah, I applied exactly. to three and I got into three." Right. So to me, it's like a no is a yes. A no is a maybe a not now, maybe later. Mm hmm. It's true, it, and and that's what I think I learned too. I, I always heard the no's and not now, just you know when or later. And I got that stuck into my head too. I, when I when I started, you know, sales in general, my you know the people that were training me would tell me like, no is great. You go through a hundred no's and then you'll get one yes. And I'm like, okay. And I didn't question it either. Um, I, I guess that has to do with your mindset too. At whatever age you are. It's because you were young and you were gullible enough. Yeah. Because you didn't know anything else beside that, so you didn't have a predisposition of historical vision that right. would stop you from saying, "Oh no!" Before I got fifty no's, it didn't feel good. You didn't have that. So when yep. you don't have that, it's much easier to be able to. Versus somebody who's fifty years old, they go through that. They get two no's. Oh my God, that damages their ego so bad. It's over. Like it's the end of the world. Two people yeah. said no to me. Like. You say no all the time. You just are not you, now for the first time you're on the recipient side. So that's what happens. But no, listen, yeah. it's it's bullshit. I've proven so many companies that cold market doesn't work. I've proven all that long for eight nine years with what I did. I prove all of them done. So the minute they start talking, oh, you can't be talking to strangers. I just show my track record. I'm like, listen, uh, you were too chicken and you didn't <laughs> know what your product was and you couldn't convey the message. And you were just an abnormal little sissy person that didn't want to learn <laughs> communication skills. You're yeah. introvert, and you think everybody should be introvert, and you think everybody should come to you for your services. But if mm -hmm. you're servant, I mean, think about it. If a doctor comes out with the medicine that cure COVID nineteen, you think that idiot is gonna sit there and only call two doctors? Right. That guy needs to get on the phone and tell the planet. They're mm -hmm. probably kind of gonna call. News channels. They're gonna call politicians, doctors, yeah. head of hospitals, head of you know, head of H HRs, and say, "Hey, man, I got this cure. Let's get it out there. What are we gonna do?" Exactly. You think the doctor is gonna sit there and just worry about how many hospitals are gonna say no? That yep. would be retarded. You know, mm -hmm. people's lives are at the stake of it. So yeah. when I get to people where they say this doesn't work and everything else, I'm like, no, you, you haven't done your homework. Yeah. If you haven't done your homework, don't give me your opinion because your opinion is not based on facts. Yeah, I mean, I think everything works. I, everything and anything works. I don't care what what your idea about it is or, or what you think. If if it, you think it's bad, if you think it's good, everything works. It's a matter of you work, and that's what I used to tell so myself. So, Sabrina, too. my question is: When you're bringing me to teach your trainer to your to your agent, so I'm going to teach your new business owners how to get more nose. When is that training happening? When are we doing this? Oh, week? that's happening very soon, actually. Um, I have a lot of things coming. I have a couple ebooks coming, a couple courses, and 
um, definitely finally, finally getting uh, more trainings out to people in, you know, my whole following and every my whole audience, you know, more I was very team focused, I was very home focused. And now I'm able to just spread, you know, my knowledge to everyone, everyone that follows me and everyone that watches me. So listen, how do people find you? Uh, you guys can follow my Instagram uh, at CEO and stilettos underscore. Uh, I can probably just write it in the comments here too. And I mean, we'll tag you later. You know, no big deal. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah, guys can find me there. Yeah, they'll have it on the comment section. They'll be able to do it once the video gets edited. They'll